Welcome to Building Stuff. Today we're looking at the third of four Tesla coils that I've built in the last three and a half to four months working intensively. This is the third uh, of them and uh, I'll just uh, run you through the specifications. Um, toroid 40 centimeters in diameter, 90 in height. Uh, the top of the uh, Tesla coil stands at about 96 centimeters above the floor. Breakout point stands at about 105 to 106 centimeters off the ground. And across here from the breakout point to this ladder, which we've connected to uh, the um, earth rail uh, for it to strike, is about 105 centimeters from the breakout point. Okay, and uh, to the ground, as I say, it's about 160 directly down at an angle. At an angle, it's uh, probably 120 centimeters or more. And the coil itself is, the secondary coil is 60 centimeters uh, high or long uh, with a diameter of 11 centimeters. And pretty standard copper primary, uh, six millimeter copper tubing for the primary coil, uh, wound uh, on a nice acrylic, clear acrylic, housing and framework with the uh, aluminium support bars here okay so this is the rotary spark gap of the 220 nanofarad capacitor dual microwave transformer uh, tesla coil these uh, contacts uh, using the bolts with uh, the tips uh, machine so that they came to a narrower point uh, so for a small uh, contact and what happens is that it glows red after a short operation and it burns the contact uh, and so the the spacing of the um, the contact is uh, increasing as time goes by and it's damaging the uh, the bolts uh, there as you can see so uh, not the ideal design it doesn't last very long uh, in this way the uh, other uh, spark gaps rotary spark gaps have the the um, uh, the nut end or the uh, the hex end facing each other presenting a larger surface area and, uh, and so they don't uh, heat up as badly and burn so easily now, this is a dual microwave transformer, microwave oven transformer, Tesla coil. Only uses two, one over there and one over here with a rotary spark gap. Now, I wanted to build a dual MOT Tesla coil and compare it with the quad MOT Tesla coil that I built previously to see if I can get very reasonable discharges with a, 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 just two microwave transformers. Now, there's obvious benefits in that, less in weight, less in cost, uh, and so on. The other advantage is that you can build a smaller unit, smaller housing using less material. And also you can technically wind the windings closer to each other on the primary uh, because you're dealing with uh, less voltage, so uh, less voltage across each of the windings. But uh, that's not too important because you tend to only use two or three depending on your capacitor bank, uh, two or three windings anyway, but that's another issue that uh, a, a, a lower voltage dual microwave transformer um, Tesla coil provides. Uh, at half the voltage of a quad uh, MOT Tesla coil, you also have uh, improvements in uh, uh, insulation and resistance to arcing uh, of your wiring. So a few basic benefits uh, in addition to uh, lower voltage rating required for your capacitor bank. Now, if you check your formula relating to magnetic field strength, magnetic field strength uh, does not have voltage uh, in the formula at all. It's uh, dependent on the number of turns and the, the current flowing through. So um, because we're working with a lower voltage, it doesn't mean that we're not going to necessarily develop less of a magnetic field. Look, let's look again at the rotary spark gap, similar to design to uh, the previous uh, rotary spark gaps that I've used or built. Uh, slightly thinner rotor. Uh, not as thick as the very first one. Stainless steel, uh, six millimeter uh, contact uh, bolts used for that, and on this side, eight millimeter bolts. And uh, what you can see with all the tests, uh, they're burning uh, the heads of those bolts, but uh, this, it's still operating okay. Coming around, so safety spark gap there across the uh, the terminals, high voltage terminals of the uh, rotary spark gap. So here's the other side of the uh, micro other microwave transformer and we've got a current limiting uh, toroid a um, 
toroidal uh, inductor uh, with 200 turns uh, of enameled copper wire using that to limit the current. And what's special about this is that unlike my previous uh, Tesla coils, which used banks of capacitors, uh, this one is a single capacitor. Now it simplifies construction, less mounting hardware, less work. Uh, whether it's more expensive, I don't think so. If you just uh, spend the uh, your money on one, uh, you will find that uh, considering the amount of work that you have to do with uh, soldering and and um, getting uh, the capacitor banks with multiple capacitors, this is so much easier and so much neater in terms of a construction. Now, observe, this is a 220 nanofarad or 0.22 microfarad uh, polypropylene capacitor rated at 20,000 volts. So two microwave transformers will produce about 4,200 volts. That gives us almost five times uh, the rating uh, of uh, our output, high voltage output, uh, in case there are spikes. So that's more than plenty in you, uh, for uh, most uh, circumstances. And just a simple safety spark gap across the capacitor in case the voltages uh, spike for any reason to protect the capacitor. So that's it in a nutshell. Let's take it for a run. Two hundred and twenty nanofarad dual MOT Tesla coil with its new short secondary coil. Right, some spectacular long arcs there. Uh, so as a dual microwave oven transformer Tesla coil, it's performing very well. Uh, arcs to the ground, arcs to that ladder quite some distance away, and a couple of arcs to its own earth ring. So uh, very good performance. Now, as usual with my other videos uh, on Tesla coils, uh, I'm going to try and make some changes, tweak it, uh, make some alterations to test a few things and uh, see how we go. What I want to do is uh, I've got the, a new uh, type of um, primary coil uh, made out of uh, aluminium flat bar, which I've designed specifically. This copper um, primary coil is sitting on its own little base plate here, which I can easily remove. Four screws will uh, come out. It will come out. And I can f drop in the new uh, aluminium uh, primary coil and see how that performs. Here is our aluminium flat bar um, primary coil ready to drop in. Okay, so we've taken the toroid off, the top cover and the earth ring. Let's have a quick look at the copper primary coil, copper tube 6mm and the tube centers are 12 millimeters apart. Okay, 12 millimeters apart. I'm going to change that for the aluminium coil. Making note of where we tapped that coil for that optimal performance. That's one, two, third, and back about a quarter of a turn. So two and three quarter turns. Okay, let's have a look at uh, the new aluminium flat bar coil. There it is. The spacing between the flat bar is 10 millimeters, so a little bit less, but uh, the uh, width or the thickness of the bar is quite flat, unlike the circular round uh, copper tubing. So you can fit a little bit uh, more uh, in a smaller space, but we don't need that many, only two and three quarter turns tap at the same place. Okay, so we've got our new uh, aluminium flat bar primary coil fitted. 
and I've made a little clip to attach uh, the high voltage line to it and we're going to see how that performs. It's tapped at essentially the same turn as the copper winding. Uh, the flat bar is only 10 millimeters apart from uh, center of bar to center of bar. It's quite flat and narrow uh, as opposed to the round copper which was uh, circular and uh, took up a little bit more space so they can be fitted a little bit closer together and even closer than that if necessary. Let's see how we go. Aluminium, aluminium flat bar primary coil test. Going pretty well. Right, I've moved the primary tap to reduce the uh, primary inductance a little bit. Let's see how we go. Not any strikes to the earth ring on that occasion. I'm going to increase the inductance by a quarter turn or so. A little bit more inductance on the primary. Pretty good. Right, tapping back to the same number of turns as with the copper coil. Right, so the aluminium primary coil uh, performs uh, very similarly to the copper primary coil. So that gives us proof of concept. So we can use this design uh, as a primary coil. And what I'm going to do in a subsequent video is to show you how to easily wind one of these. In fact, it may be easier and uh, cheaper than uh, a copper uh, coil to wind. And I'll show you that in a subsequent video. So uh, subscribe and... Um, and like and uh, f uh, follow our progress if you're wanting to uh, build something similar. Um, and so we can also now utilize uh, this primary coil in another design and I'm going to uh, next try and build a single microwave transformer Tesla coil using this uh, aluminium uh, primary coil uh, and we know that it will perform as well as uh, a copper primary coil. So uh, Again, subscribe if you want to follow our progress and see what comes of that single microwave transformer Tesla coil. Right, returning to the copper uh, primary coil, everything refitted just for reference. Very similar discharges, very similar strikes to the ground and to the ladder, so much the same.